Hello there, my name is Lia Pambewe and welcome to another exciting episode of My World Podcast brought to you by Premier Credit. Here we discuss all things personal and business finances, we look at market trends and more importantly we host exemplary guests that bring you high level discussions on some of the most happening um, items in the finance industry. Today we have someone exemplary to take us through the actuarial and insurance industry and he'll just take us on a journey on um, his his career and everything related to the industry he's in. I have Mulenga Semutati who is president of the Actuarial Society of Zambia and also CEO of Gralix Actuarial uh, Consultancy. Mulenga, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you for the invitation, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I know you're a very busy person, um, and we don't take you being here lightly. No, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks for the, for the invite. It's, it's always an honor to, to share my story and share um, what we're doing in the actual profession. Okay. So thank you. Great, great. And also compliments of the season. Merry, Christ, Merry Christmas. Someone said Merry Christmas. Someone so. said Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Already in the spirit. <laughs> yes. Okay. So before we jump into the serious stuff, I just want to know a little bit more about you away from work, away from everything else that you're trying to do and change the world. Mm -hmm. Who is Mulenga? Um, so a little about me. I'm Mulenga Mtati, born and raised um, in Zambia, did most of my education up to A-levels here in Zambia, um, then went to the UK and studied actuarial science um, at London School of Economics. Um, stayed in London and worked there for about 12 years. So I worked for AIG, so those of you who support or used to support Man United, you know mm -hmm. um, AIG, uh, they used to sponsor them. Yeah. Uh, and then thereafter, I transitioned from working within an insurance company into consulting. So they moved to KPMG UK um, and then PwC UK. Um, thereafter, I decided to, to come back and essentially use all the, the skills and everything that I'd learned in the UK and brought it back to Zambia and set up um, Greylix. Um, I think that's about me. Oh, yes. Um, first born. I've got mm -hmm. uh, two siblings. My brother is a lawyer. Um, my mm -hmm. sister works in marketing. Um, recently got married, so I've been mm -hmm. married for three months now. Congratulations. Yeah, so <laughs> enjoying, enjoying the journey yes. as well, yes. Okay, yes. that's good. Um, so you have mentioned that you, you came back mm -hmm. and then started your, your consulting firm. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to set up Gralix? Um, it's, it's a combination. I think it's, for me, I think it was COVID. That was, so most people had obviously experienced uh, awful or challenging uh, periods during COVID. For me, I think COVID was my silver lining um, because I had the opportunity to actually work in Zambia remotely for uh, my company in the UK. And so whilst I was here and uh, maybe taking a step back, when I went for university to the UK, I always said, I'll come back to Zambia. I'll come to Zambia mm -hmm. at some point. I'll, I'll work for five years and then go back. Five years passed, I was still there. Yes. Ten years passed, I was still there. Um, and then COVID hit, and then I had the opportunity to work from Zambia, yep. but for a UK firm. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I was doing a lot of networking and figuring out who basically does the actual services within the Zambian market. Um, and what I got found out, it's there's no local firm servicing the local companies. All these services were being done from South Africa, Kenya, sometimes even from the UK. So they would hire consultants from the UK to do the services here in Zambia. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just felt, you know, it's about time I just make that jump. Um, it was a very, very difficult uh, decision because where I was in my career in the UK, I was, I was pretty senior, earning a decent amount of money. Yeah. And essentially it was, Basically, let me walk away from that, come back and set up the business. Um, and also the reason in, uh, and why Greylix is really close to my heart is so the name is a combination of my mom and my dad. 
Oh, wow. So my mom's Grace, mm -hmm. uh, my dad is Felix. Mm. So basically put those two oh, names wow. together to, to, to form the company. That's really yes. nice. That's really, really nice. Yeah. Kudos to mom and dad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have mentioned that you've worked both in the UK and in Zambia. How has your international experience influenced your approach to actuarial consulting locally? Um, I think it's been a, a massive, I think it's twofold. It's a massive positive in the sense that some of the work that we produce is, is of a high quality. We have uh, high attention to detail and this is because of everything I went through working for a consulting firm in the UK and dealing with clients that are actually OCD about small mm -hmm. things such as formatting, yeah. um, text, etc. So I've brought that same skill set uh, and infused it uh, within my, my company. So it's a positive in, in that sense. Um, and it's a bit of a, a negative in the sense that in the UK, actually, is a well-known. Wherever mm -hmm. you go, people know your services. Yes. They buy your services without you ac actually having to market them that much. Mm -hmm. Whereas here in Zambia, they still some education needed, right? S certain companies, rightly so, they use actuaries for various parts of their business. But the vast majority of our current clients now never really interacted with actuaries. Mm. So when we set up, it took us about eight to nine months before we actually got any revenue coming in yeah. because we're working on sort of the education piece. Yeah. And this is one thing I think I took for for granted when I was setting up because I thought everyone knows what an actuary yeah. is and they'll be coming to knock so on my door. So you have to do the groundwork of sensitizing. Exactly, all, yeah. exactly. Um, and then I guess another challenge is, um, and I think it's not just for the actual profession, it's um, probably maybe it's a Zambian culture thing. Um, people are scared to say no. So they'll string mm. you along yes. for months. Yes. <laughs> oh no, we're yes. just having a board meeting. Yes. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll finalize this, just yes. call me next yeah. week. There are so many next weeks that, that I'm still <laughs> waiting yeah. if for. If you're a salesperson yes. or a business owner, you will understand. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that was that was a challenge. Um, yeah. It was an eye opener, but I think we persevered and it, it's, it's proven to have paid off. Okay. Yeah. So I know you have mentioned some, but are there any notable differences when it comes to the actuary industry um, in the UK and in Zambia? Uh, yeah, definitely. So the, the key difference is data. So some of my clients, for example, for example, insurance companies, they still do their underwriting or the claims process on, on paper, mm -hmm. right? So you can go into this insurance company, there are bundles and bundles of, of paper everywhere. Yeah. Um, in the UK, the data is clean. Everything it's, it's is digitalized. Is digitalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You barely see any of those papers anywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, and with clean data, you're able to do more in terms of uh, data analytics mm -hmm. and figuring out which markets they should target mm -hmm. uh, to enhance their pricing for the products. Uh, but here, pricing for insurance products is just standardized across yes. any consumer, mm -hmm. right? So you're yeah, insuring your car, they'll say, okay, we'll do 2.5% of the value of your vehicle. Mm -hmm. In UK markets, because the data is so clean, uh, they have vast amounts of data, they're actually able to price according to you individually, mm -hmm. right? And they've taken that a step further to introduce what is called um, telematics. So essentially you embed this within your vehicle or through an app, and as you're driving every day, it's tracking your driving mm -hmm. behavior, right? How are you taking the corners? Yes. Um, are you driving at peak times? Are you always above the speed limit? Mm -hmm. What it's trying to do is gauge and to dynamically price your insurance policy. Mm -hmm. So if you're always driving within the speed limit, uh, driving at times where it's not too busy, automatically, it says, uh, it will be low or standard, yeah, your, yeah, your premiums will reduce, mm -hmm. right? But if you're a person who's doing handbrake turns whenever you're, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're high risk, <laughs> high risk. Yes. Yeah, yeah, trying to finish the speedometer yes. all the time, your, your, your price will, are much, are higher, much yeah. higher. So they've taken, they've used data mm -hmm. to then embed technology within their pricing. And Zambia, I think, is maybe 10 or 15 years behind that. Oof. 
Okay, but we have you here, so we'd <laughs> like to believe that will be a bit more accelerated, yeah? yeah? Okay, just to jump into the leadership and entrepreneurship side of things, mm -hmm. I know you are passionate about leadership and also about entrepreneurship. How do these passions manifest in your works uh, as, as an actuary and also even just leading your firm? Mm -hmm. I know you have a brilliant team. I see that on your websites and, yeah. and your socials. You're always you know, talking about how brilliant of a team mm -hmm. you have. But how, how does that speak from like a leadership perspective? Um, okay, so... So my team, so it's an interesting team and they're, they're an amazing team. They've learned so much and so this is our sort of second full financial year. Majority of the people within my team are straight out of university, right? So as a leader and most of them obviously have never worked, actually worked in a company and let alone a professional uh, services firm. Um, so, so my leadership style has been a the teaching aspect right yeah. and certain things you take for granted as someone who's had experience working in a professional mm -hmm. services firm yeah. someone coming out of university doesn't have that uh, I remember one of my analysts I asked him to send something to a client we had a meeting and I said oh you can send this through to the client he just sent an email and put attached I was like oh my god <laughs> oh my <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, yeah. So then, so the basic etiquette, yeah. basic professional etiquette. Yeah. Um, I even had sessions with them about professionalism. Yes. When you take clients out for dinner or lunch, don't start eating before yes. the client. Wait yeah. for the food to come before. Little things like that. Yeah. When you're at their offices, mm -hmm. um, if they, uh, what do you call it? If they open the door for you, say thank you yes. and pass yes. through. The other yeah. way around, if they're here, please open the door for yes. them yeah. and let them. So just the, those little... The basics, The yeah. basics. So mm -hmm. it's been a combination of teaching them the technical aspects of the job, mm -hmm. as well as the soft skills that are required to actually excel within the consulting world. Yes. Um, and then at the same time also taming, because our business is naturally so the sales. It's technical, mm -hmm. but sales, because we have to sell to get... The BDM bit, yes. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got a lot of strong characters within the business. And it's finding a way to rein in some of this bent up uh, energy so that it's not uh, destructive to other people. Yeah. And helping realize that we're all young, but we have to. To be aggressive. Aggressive yeah. and mature as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, we don't expect you to be sitting in CEOs in a room and. Mm. Um, I know, behaving yeah. as if yeah, you're yeah. not supposed to be at, yeah. at that table. Yeah. Um, so no, it's it's been an interesting interesting journey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, well, that's that's good. Mm. Um, so I know you have spoken about how how you undertake some of your your, your strategies, but there, are there any like specific habits or strategies um, you found help in maintaining a balance, especially in uh, the excessive pressure that comes with you being a business owner, mm -hmm. that you ca that comes with you being the president of the Actuary Society of Zambia, and also even just your personal um, life. Mm -hmm. Have you found just like a little bit of a niche somewhere there? Okay. I know, um, and I, I think I, I read this somewhere. It should have been Sunny Zulu who posted it a couple of months saying, uh, work-life balance is a myth. Mm -hmm. Like there isn't anything like that ever existed, but have you found a, a way. like a mini strategy on how to balance that for yourself? Um, yeah, so so my wife will kill me for this, but for me, the work is is my life, right? I don't, yeah. I do not know what I would be doing if I um, if I wasn't working. Yeah. Um, but I've I found I've got myself in in a very good routine. So wake up every day at five, hit the gym. Mm -hmm. After the gym, get back and then start basically start working. So uh, start working by eight. Um, I have a hard switch off around eighteen thirty. Mm -hmm. Go home, spend time with the missus. Mm -hmm. After dinner, start working again. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's <laughs> my. <laughs> I thought you were going to say switch off up until five the following day. No, uh, okay. but one thing that that we've done, I've blocked out all my Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. It's a it's date night with Madame, so That's I switch great. off completely yeah. every every Thursday. Okay, yeah. great, yeah. great. We like that. We really do like <laughs> yes. that. Okay, um, what role do you believe leadership plays in the success of 
uh, an actuarial profession or as a business overall? Like, let's say your number one recommendation, top line recommendation. A top line recommendation as as a leader in in a yes, business. Yeah. Um, I think the not okay not just for the actual profession but any mm. business the the people under you or the people you're leading should be able uh, to be motivated by your your strategy and your vision mm -hmm. that's the most important you get so much from your team when they properly understand what it is that you're trying to do yeah. um, and bringing your your team along uh, on the journey right so mm -hmm. for me even if someone has joined, then maybe I've only been there for one week. I take them along to client meetings, so I, because I feel it's important for them to to shadow me and learn how I interact with actual clients. Yeah. Um, and funny enough, you can even now you start hearing your people, your colleagues using the words that it's, you use. They sound like yeah, you know, it's like yeah. now. <laughs> 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 they sound like yeah. You. I, yeah, I yeah. promise you, I get it. Um, yeah. So I have we're, we're staff membership of. 10 as yeah. money acumen yeah. and then you hear um, especially one of the, the the young ladies that we've had since inception yes. and she's our admin manager there she she does she she can speak as well as i can about the business yes. yeah so now every time uh, she picks up the phone because um, the office number is what appears on my business cards and whatnot mm -hmm. so, it's very difficult for people to actually tell that that's not me. So they literally, immediately she says hello, yeah. they're going direct into a conversation and 99.9 .9 of the time, yeah. she has to slow them down and say, no, this is not the upper on the line. Yes, yeah. <laughs> this is, Vedrika, how may I help you? Uh, yeah. okay. But then it just then shows that you've embedded the vision so well so yes. that they, they can interpret it on your behalf to you. Exactly. Which is... An absolute win for a business owner. No, hundred percent. And yeah, given it's it's been only two years, yes. um, each and every year they're becoming more and more ambitious, yes. right? And I'm at the point where I'm not the one saying, "Oh, I need to go see this client." Or they're the one saying, "Oh, have you thought about this? Yes. Can we help this client in this particular area?" Mm -hmm. Or I had a meeting with this particular person. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I set up a formal meeting for you to go and talk him through how we can assist? Yeah. So they're they're very hungry and they're very motivated. But obviously, they get a uh, commission for whatever. Of so course. They, they <laughs> There's it, also but, a monetary also, motivation yes. right there at yeah. the bottom, which is good. Yes. Okay. Um, the insurance and pensions industry is slowly but quickly fast evolving in Zambia. How have you and your team positioned yourself for, for this particular change? Um, I think so, so focusing mainly on the insurance side, then I'll talk about the pension. So the insurance industry I had a period where they just issued a new insurance act. Mm -hmm which was operationalized um, last year, December 2022. Yeah. Um, so it's a 2021 act. It took some time to go through parliament, but then it got, came into operation in 2022, December. We obviously knew this was going to happen. We studied the act from front to back page mm -hmm. to, to understand the implications to our clients. And during the periods before they even operationalized it. So the beginning of 2022, yeah. we were already talking to clients about the implications of the new act and how we can help them with A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. There are certain aspects that um, companies had to do in their financial statements due to the new act. So they had to calculate things in a different way. Mm -hmm. We then went, learned how to calculate those things in a different way yeah. before the act was actually operationalized such that when it came and the regulator says, you need to hand in your financial statements mm -hmm. in this particular way, we say, send we're it to ready. our way, yeah. we're ready, <laughs> we can do it. Yeah. And that proved to be a, a real positive. So we spent six months just understanding, going mm. through Excel sheets, this and that, just to learn how to do it. Um, and then when the clients came, we were able to do it within one or two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's so like proper efficiency and proactiveness. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so for me, I like to believe be, we should be ahead of the curve. We know mm -hmm. this is happening. Figure out how you can help your clients address the challenges that are being imposed by maybe regulation, mm -hmm. um, um, etc.
jumping into your your role as president of the Actuary Society of Zambia, as the president or as the person that's seated at the helm of it, what initiatives or changes uh, have you implemented or overseen um, during your tenure? Um, so this would sound basic, but we actually have a website now. Mm, uh, nice. We are, we are on social. <laughs> so the Actuary Society has been in operation since 2007. Okay. We never had a web website before mm -hmm. before uh, the new exco came into power so we've got a website we're on social media mm -hmm. uh, but above that i think we've raised the visibility of the society so much so that when companies are looking for sort of technical actuarial type of roles they reach out to society for us to sort of disperse the the adverts um, we're also at the point where now the regulators reach out to us to, and have we have a seat at the table whenever they're mm -hmm. thinking of adjusting certain regulations for the pensions or the insurance uh, sector. Yeah. We've also created a mentorship uh, program. So in Zambia, there are only three of us fully qualified actuaries. Mm -hmm. There are so many students uh, across UNSA and UNILAS um, who are doing actuarial science, yes. but they before they didn't have anyone to lean on in terms of, okay, what's the career progression after this, mm -hmm. right? How many professional exams do I need to do to get to A, B, and C? Yes. So we've created a mentorship program for the actuaries within here in Zambia, as well as actuaries uh, uh, sitting in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of Zambian actuaries in South Africa, uh, UK, etc. So we have connected the students within Zambia to these actuaries um, and also increased sort of social activities so mm -hmm. that the members can now uh, get to know and understand each other. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really good. Mm -hmm. And you have mentioned that you, you, you're you only three of you in terms of fully qualified actuaries. Yeah. How do you see the actuary profession in Zambia and what challenges and opportunities do you foresee? Um, I think there are more opportunities now than challenges. So mm -hmm. before we had a period of significant brain drain, people were get, going through actual science, they tried to apply for jobs, they're not getting the jobs that they thought that they required. Mm -hmm. um, some people have done actual science, find themselves working maybe as a claims administrator, mm -hmm. right? Uh, rather than doing the real technical work. work. Mm -hmm. The, the change in the Insurance Act um, now requires all insurance companies uh, to have an actuary. So mm. before it was only life insurance companies, so about eight, eight companies. Now even general insurance companies and reinsurance companies, so general insurance companies are about 22. Uh, and the reinsurance companies are five, right? So it brings 27 companies now, mm. in addition to the life companies, yes. need to have an actuary. Good. Um, which is good for the profession. Mm -hmm. um, it's good for us as Greylix because we have first mover advantage. So mm -hmm. we've been successful in uh, landing up to 10 clients within this particular year. Yeah. But in, in future, what that means is companies now will start creating actual departments within their business. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the people who are coming out of Unza and Unilas will have sort of a home to go after they graduate. Yeah. Um, in the UK markets and other developed markets, they have full-fledged actual departments and they are highly sought after as soon as they're coming out of university. So that's where I hope the Zambian actual uh, profession will go. Well, I like to believe that's where it's going, especially yeah. with the expansion. Uh, you know, there are only certain things that can be done through policy mm -hmm. and, and such introductions. So it's, it's definitely a good wave. Okay. Are there any projects, exciting projects that Gralix is working on that we should be on the lookout for? Um, we've done a, one of them that was pretty exciting, but I, I don't know if it's exciting is relative. So yes. it's exciting. Yes. It was exciting for us and exciting for at least the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. um, but it could have a knock-on effect on potential policy orders. So we did a um, feasibility study to mm -hmm. see whether there are certain classes of insurers insurance that should be made mandatory, right? So right now only third party motor is compulsory mm -hmm. um, across Zambia. But then 
in other markets, other uh, insurance coverage is compulsory, like your property. Mm -hmm. Zambia, most people don't really buy insurance for their, no, their property no, uh, or contents. Mm -hmm. uh, employers' liability is compulsory. In, in the Zambian market, it's not not compulsory to, to the same extent as, as the West. Mm -hmm. um, so we did a study on this, and the results showed that there's a, there's a real need to potentially make, for example, property insurance. Mm -hmm. This is, should cover your personal as well as commercial and markets. Um, and this is on the basis, like if you think about a market, whenever there's a fire a flood, right? What do the marketeers, what's the first thing the marketeers do? They go on the news and cry to government to mm -hmm. help them because they've lost their stock. Mm -hmm. They hadn't insured anything, right? Mm -hmm. If they have insurance in, this, in these situations, the insurance will pay out for whatever loss of stock has mm -hmm. happened due to this flood or fire. Yeah. Um, so that's what the study was about. It's not really just about helping the insurance make money, but also provide bridging that gap to provide um, a social benefit uh, to society. Yeah. yeah, especially when you look at it from like a risk management perspective. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And those are unforeseen circumstances. We've seen this time and again. I yeah. think in the past, maybe even like 10, 15 years, we've seen like three or four or five markets bend down. Exactly. across the country yeah so it's it's now like an absolute need yeah exactly okay so we have come right to the end of our mm. conversation today but as we summarize um what do you have to say to okay we'll start with this question so i'll ask you two questions one to an aspiring actually Yes, out mm. there. Okay. What are some of the challenges they should look out for? What are some of the opportunities? I know you have mentioned opportunities, mm. but just from how does one person prepare themselves to to jump into the industry? Mm. Okay. So I think the the most important thing, and this is now also embedded within our, our values at Galex, it's uh, perseverance. It's a difficult journey to be a fully qualified actuary. Um, after I did my degree, it took another three years to do the professional uh, examinations. And unknowingly, the exams were always after Easter. So I never had an okay. Easter break yeah. for the whole three years. You'd be walking past the bars and the pubs yes. uh, on a sunny day, but you can't, you're, you're going straight going. to the library. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, so it's perseverance. Um, you sacrifice for, for that period uh, mm -hmm. with the hope that once you're done, um, the rewards and the benefits will basically come and show themselves through. Um, another thing I would say is, and I said this, I had the talk at Unza. Don't think about the money reward immediately, right? Yeah. So if you've been given an opportunity to actually study or work within an actual environment and use the skills that you, you've gained during the university, take that opportunity on and be aggressive with that opportunity and the money will follow yeah yeah at some point it, it will follow when i when i just started working my first salary was, was uh, just i think it was about eighteen thousand uh, pounds a year per mm -hmm. annum um and when you convert that's like a thousand per month mm -hmm. and you could barely i remember my first house i was sharing with five people in the oh, house wow. um and I was, and at that time, it was like my motivation then mm -hmm. was let me work hard so that I can move yeah, out of this yeah. house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my motivation. Let me work mm -hmm. hard so that I can move out of this house. And then sure enough, I did. My salary increased, moved out of the house. I got a one bed place by myself. Mm -hmm. But then the one bed place I got by myself was right by the train tracks. So mm -hmm. it was affordable, but it was right by the yeah. train. So you'd hear the train every, every morning. Mm -hmm. So then my next motivation was like, let me work harder so I can move. Mm -hmm another one bit but away from the train tracks mm -hmm. uh, and then sure enough worked hard finished all my examinations and then moved to a pretty pretty nice place thereafter um, but i say that to say is that be aggressive with the opportunities you've been given mm -hmm. and find something that motivates you to get to the next step yeah. right if you're in a company and you're just comfortable i'm getting my pay mm -hmm. i i don't think that's it's, it's, it's not, not yeah, yeah and it doesn't even feel like you're living right mm -hmm. so you're just there and say okay i'm comfortable yeah whatever happens what happen. next what next yeah. right so have that desire to learn um have that desire to expand your network yeah. um a lot of opportunities that i've had uh, throughout my career i'd say 
80 or even 7 to 80 percent have been driven by my networks yeah. um, so really really nature the networks that you have as you are rising up um, or as you are starting your career okay great and the final question is <laughs> you know how business owners or entrepreneurs or SMEs um, are always perceived as look you're doing well your business is doing well everything should be rosy yeah. and and yeah but I like to believe there are some difficulties when it comes to being a business owner yeah mm -hmm. from your practical view mm -hmm. um, what what would be your advice to someone who is looking at becoming a business owner or an SME and just some of the difficulties that SMEs face um, so for me as a business owner, month end is the worst Hero week. Worst <laughs> time for me. Yeah. Like my, <laughs> my mood even like even the <laughs> team even <laughs> can see it. Month end is the worst time for yeah. me. Um, but it's just you know, you just you take it on it it it's part of way of, of, of doing business. Yeah. Um but it's very stressful when you have because in all intents and purposes we're an SME. It's very stressful when you have clients that are delaying payments right mm -hmm. so in some situations we've got clients that haven't paid for four five or even six months mm -hmm. um and i was telling this I, I joke about this with some of my clients it's like zambian business is very hard imagine you you do work and someone hasn't paid you for six months mm -hmm. right where are you getting the money yes. to actually keep yeah. your business afloat, afloat. Yeah. most cases it would be through credit and so, by the time the money is coming, it would have been eaten up by all the interest. It'd be eaten up by all the interest. So the business yeah. would have been closed. Yeah. The money comes in. The business is not there <laughs> it's anymore. Existing. Um, yeah. yeah. So that that has been a, a real challenge for us. But I think we've been lucky because we've got a diverse range of clients. Yeah. Right. So if this person hasn't paid, okay, it's annoying, but we're still able to continue operating because we've got a different set of clients. Yeah. So. As someone starting a business, don't be anchored on just one one client. Try and find diverse streams of income from from different places. So you're always in business development mode, mm -hmm. right? Don't just say I've got this one big job, it's done. I've got this one big job. What happens next? Which is the next yeah. big job I can get? Which can it's I? Almost like product formulation, different exactly. types of services, ranges e of services. Exactly, because yeah. our our um, our work is project based. Mm -hmm. Right, so they'll engage us and say, "Do this for the next three months." Once that finishes, there's no, mm -hmm. there's exactly, no money. Yeah. So then you have to be on your toes. Okay, this is finishing in the next three months. Mm -hmm. Where are we getting the next sort of income from, yeah. uh, and 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 that. So, um, yeah, think of diverse ways to earn money and be entrepreneurial. Always think outside the box and try to think ahead of the curve. Yeah. Right. What, for example, the economy is at this particular point. Mm -hmm. How can our help clients manage the risk associated with um, FX rates, yeah. etc. Or this new regulation is coming through. What does this mean for my clients? How can I be ahead of them and advise them on how best to manage the regulatory risks that are coming through? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Um, I feel it's been a very enlightening conversation. Yeah. And we can only wish you, your team, um, the association, that you that, that you're sitting as the head of all the very best as you try to change the world i'll put it as change the world in yeah. the actuary and insurance industry no yeah. thank you very much thank you for joining us thank you for the invite once again okay so that was mulenga c mutati uh, joining us and giving us a deep understanding of how the actuary industry in zambia has been operating what him and his team have been up to and just him as an individual and some of the items that he's been up to. Okay, so this is the Up and Bill Way and till next time, this is my work podcast. Bye-bye.